Hey, everybody. So today is January 17th, 2024, and Max 8.6 has come out, which contains a lot of new features that I'll talk about in some future videos. But today I'm going to focus on one feature in kind of one use case. So the feature is called arrays, which are a little bit like lists, but in a lot of ways quite different. We'll talk about why they're different and what they're useful for. And we'll talk about how to use them, particularly in the context of making these MIDI tool devices that are now possible in Live 12, Ableton Live 12, that's coming out uh, very soon. So arrays, there it's kind of interesting. When they first came out, I like wasn't really sure why they needed to exist. Uh, I was like, well, we have lists in Max. Ma Max lists are great. You can put a bunch of symbols in them. You can put a bunch of numbers in them, whatever. Um, the arrays, they work almost a little bit more like arrays do in JavaScript, and you'll see a lot more of the functions that if you if you write JavaScript that you're used to. And really the thing I think that is the most important to understand about why they're advantageous over lists in some situations is if you're working with dictionaries. And dictionaries in Max are structured data, which looks a lot like JSON, JavaScript object notation. So again, we're kind of borrowing from the JavaScript world a way of organizing data. And these dictionaries, and in fact, arrays within dictionaries are used quite a bit inside of this new feature in Ableton Live. So we're gonna dive in today. What I'm gonna do is take you into Live, show you this new MIDI tools feature really quickly. I'm sure there's lots of other videos on YouTube if you wanna learn more about those in general, but I'll show you really quick. And then we'll actually start to build one and I'll show you how they work and how they use dictionaries and how they use arrays and how we can use this new family of arrays object array objects in Max to build our own tools. So let's get into it. So I'm here in Ableton Live. I have an empty MIDI clip. And in this kind of details view, there's these two new tabs. The one to the right is uh, clip generators. So this is one that ships with Live. And uh, pretty, pretty fun little kind of algorithmic pattern generator. It works a little bit like the binary algorithm uh, that I've done a video about. Uh, and I'm actually kind of working on some of my own. So here's one, let me get rid of this. Uh, and this is sort of working on the idea of like manipulating a phase or a phaser and then generating some node events that way. And then, so let's do that. I'll do something like this and then uh, with this little function, we can create some different notes. Actually, I'm gonna, let's do like that. And let's get rid of this. So one thing with these, let me actually try that again. That can be a little weird is, so these generators, right, we're just creating notes inside the MIDI clip. And I'll tell you way more about this device in the future. It's not quite done, but it's getting there. Uh, they generate MIDI inside of MIDI clips, and you can have MIDI in there and over, not overwrite it, you can add to it. So you can overdub, I guess you could say, you could add more MIDI in. This other tab contains MIDI transformers, which allow you to take notes that are there and modify them or um, duplicate them or whatever. So for example, one device that I've, that I've been working on is this one called Divs. Uh, that's going to allow us to subdivide. So you can see these sliders are actually creating little subdivisions within each of these um, these existing notes. And then we can even do things like modify the pitch over the course of that range. So these are examples of things that are possible with these new uh, MIDI tools. There's a bunch of Max for Live ones built in. Or I'm sorry, there's a bunch of sort of native ones built in from Ableton, but then there's also uh, a lot of Max for live capabilities, which is what I've been using. So what we're gonna do today is um, make a simple one of these. So let's go over to Max MIDI Transformation just to start with a generic one. And that's gonna give us this patch that has inside of it. Let me zoom in. Uh, just two objects, live.midi tool in and live.midi tool out. And they both work with dictionaries. So the MIDI tool in will produce 
two dictionaries and the MIDI tool out will accept one. If I bang this MIDI tool in, it's going to give me the output. And these dictionaries basically describe the MIDI clip. The one on the right, which is called the context dictionary, basically sort of describes the sort of shape and characteristics of the clip container, I guess you could say. So things like the beginning of our selection, where the first note starts, the lowest and highest pitch, the grid, which is very helpful. So if I change, so right now you see we're at 0 0.25, which is, so this is relative to a beat. So 0 0.25 is a 16th note because it's one fourth of a beat. But if I change this to one eighth and I bang it, now I have 0 0.5 because that's um, what an eighth note is relative to a beat in the, you know, four, four time that we have set up here in the, you know, in the master settings in live. Um, so that's the context dictionary. It also, by the way, contains scale, which is a new feature in Live 12 that I'm sure I'll talk about more in the future. The other dictionary is called the notes dictionary. And this one has a single key called notes. And then within that key is an array. And all an array is, is just a list of things. And in this case, it's a list of mini dictionaries, each of which uh, contain a bunch of data and each of which represent one of these clips. So we have eight, which means that we have eight, sorry, not clips, but notes here in the, in the clip. So what I would like to do today is make a device that basically goes through uh, this array using these new array objects, pulls the pitch out, and then like assigns that pitch to a different note. So you basically have the same rhythm, but scramble the notes. And actually, why don't we hear what this sounds like just for fun? Uh, I'll do my my favorite instrument, which is collision. So that's a nice little rhythm and melody. And so now we're going to um, mess around with that. So the first thing that we're going to do is use a dict.unpack object because the first thing we have to do is basically get, we're, we're telling this object, we're going to take this dictionary, give us what is associated with this key called notes. And if I take a message box and I just inspect the output there, and actually I'll do it, put one here too. If I bang this, you see here we're getting dictionary, you, whatever. So the way dictionaries work and the thing that is, that has always been different about dictionaries in Max from things like lists and symbols and floats and everything else is that with dictionaries, you're not passing the data around inside of Max. You're actually just passing a reference to that data where it is stored somewhere in memory. So arrays are a similar concept and that's how they differ from lists, at least one way in which they differ from lists. With lists, you're, you're just passing that list around, even if it's very long, right? If it's like a thousand item list, you're just passing a thousand item list throughout the max patch. With arrays, that array gets stored in memory somewhere, and then we're just referring to that array uh, with an address. And you can see that the format kind of of the message that we use in Max to indicate that address is very similar to the one that we use for a dictionary. So once we have something in an array format, and Dict understands that the contents of this notes uh, object is an array, then we can use these array objects to manipulate them. So array is the simplest one. It's just a basic container. We can also use array.iter, which is what I'm going to use here, just to break it up into different, um, basically just iterate out each of these one after another. So if I come over here into the console and I bang again here, uh, 
Do I have two print objects somewhere in here? No. I guess it prints um, both the... So what we're going to get from the array object is this weird message that looks a little bit like these, but it's like obj dictionary and then the rest of this, you know, these kind of identifier, like UUID sort of identifier. And I think what it's telling us here is it's actually first printing the identifier and then it's printing the data itself. So we're just each one after another printing the items in here. And then what we can do is say dict dot unpack pitch because we want to get the value associated with the pitch key here. And by the way, when you use this dict dot unpack object, you need to use a colon after the key so that the object knows that that's a key and that's what you're looking for. So if I now move the print object down here and bang, you can see now we're just getting this list of, um, of pitches. So now what I want to do basically is uh, scramble this list. And there's, uh, there's ways to do this. Since we're now working with integers, like you could totally use ZL objects if you're comfortable with those. It's kind of probably what I would normally do anyway, but I'm going to try the best I can. I think I might use one ZL here and there, but I'm going to try to do this with array objects because it's all possible. So let's think about scrambling a list. So um, what I think the thing to do here is, is to use an earn object. So earn will basically give us um, random value. It's like the random object, except it's going to not repeat the same number twice until it's uh, gone through all of the numbers, at which point you need to clear it. So the first thing that I'll do is just create a trigger object because I'm going to want to get this array several times. And the first thing that I'll do is clear my urn. Uh, actually, we'll do this after the unpack from the notes. So we'll do it like so. So we'll clear our urn. Uh, we'll get the length of the array, so array.length, because we need to tell the urn how many options there are. So it's going to get a value of eight here because we have eight items in the array. And so it's going to produce values between zero and seven. And then we'll iterate. And we're going to put these iterated items in their own array. Own array. And we could do that uh, by using array.push. This is a place where you might be like, I like ZL. I'm going to use ZL group. You know, fine. But we'll use array.push. And let's just see what that looks like. So we already know that, you know, when we print the output of the dict.unpack, we get just a list of numbers over here like this. If I take the output of array.push, it's just adding to that array. You can see like that. And I believe that we also need to clear that because that array is already there. And if I were to go through this process again, let's actually test it. Yeah, it's getting even longer because we'll just keep adding to it. So we'll clear it. And so now we have the list of the notes in the order that they're actually in, in the MIDI clip. And We'll do a similar thing on this side to get this list of random numbers between zero and seven. And again, we'll clear. So now we're gonna have two arrays. We'll have one that's the list of numbers in order and then one that's a randomized list of indices. And then we'll use the array.indexMap object. There's a ZL index map too, which does the same thing. And that should, if I did things correctly, which I don't know is especially with this new array stuff, give us a scrambled list. So actually let's print both things here. So something didn't work. Let's see if our indexes array exists. It does not appear to. Ah, because we're not actually banging the urn. 
So we're going to tell it what the length is, but we have to bang it each time. Um, so we need an Uzi. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll do like this. We'll do uh, T B I. So we'll get the length, tell it what it is. Actually, T I I is fine. And then we'll bang the Uzi. And then hit the urn. So we're telling the urn how many options there are. Then we're telling the Uzi create that many bangs to create a list of that length. Let's see if that actually worked. Still no. Let's print. Okay, there we go. So I'm getting an array of the indices. I'm getting an array, which is kind of this guy. I'm getting an array of the notes, but for some reason my index map is not working. And truthfully, I don't know why. Let's try this. Um, let's do it the old-fashioned way. Zeal group. I don't need the clear. I'll bang it when the Uzi's done. Let's see if that worked. Cool. And so that seems to have. So if we look at the last pair here, now we have this is the original order. This is the scrambled order. Or sorry, other way around, because my print objects are in weird places. So we'll do print before print after. So before, this is the full list. It's kind of annoying. Like it prints all of them. I wonder if there's a way to prevent that until it's sort of done. But there's the script. Then there's the scrambled list. So we'll take this after. And let me just clean up a little bit here. We can get rid of, we can move this aside. All right, that's like reasonably organized. So now that we have this list, now basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna iterate through uh, all of the, again, through all of the items in the notes array and modify them. And the way that we're gonna do that, uh, instead of using array.iter the way that we did here, which is basically just you know, outputting one thing after another, we're going to use this object called array.map, which is really cool and is something that you'll definitely use a lot if you make these MIDI tools because it's a little bit like a for loop or a, a little bit like uh, the array.for each in JavaScript where basically we can get uh, an output just like what array.iter will produce from the middle outlet here, but then we can actually do some stuff to that and then wrap it back around into the right inlet here and then it will once we've done that for all of the items in the list it will give us the completed uh, array to the output the help file is really good here so if i open the console we have this list which it converts into an array by the way you can send lists into array objects and it will just figure it out and it will give us from the middle outlet here, uh, those symbols, and then use this string.concat, which is another new object. There's actually a whole new family of string objects as well. It's gonna add Y to the end of that string or symbol or whatever you wanna call it, pass it back into array.map, and then when that whole process is done, we'll get the completed array at the output. So if I click this, you'll see we'll get beefy, rocky, messy. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're just going to be working with a more complex array that contains a bunch of dictionaries. And what we're going to be doing is basically replacing the pitch key within that dictionary with a pitch value from one of the other notes. Um, so uh, this is actually where I'm going to use again uh, just a, a ZL object because this array.index map is just going to give us an array that contains a bunch of MIDI note numbers. And I would like to just store them in a ZL because it's easier for me. Uh, there is like an array.index or an array.at 
object that allows us to basically take an array and output a value at position four or whatever. Uh, but the outlets are reversed. So with ZL lookup, we get the list in the right inlet and we get a number, which is the hot inlet uh, here. With this one, it's the opposite. So it's just a little bit more cumbersome patching. So I'm gonna stick with this. And similar to how we can pass lists into array objects, we can also just pass array objects into ZL objects and they just totally uh, work. And what I'm actually gonna do just to start here is with this array.map object, it wants you to uh, it wants you to send something into the right inlet after it gives you something at the middle inlet. And if you don't do that, it's just going to give you the first item and stop. So what I'll do sometimes when I'm building a patch is just, uh, you could even like be really generic and just use ZL reg. And then whatever comes out of the middle inlet, you're just going to pass straight into the uh, right I'm sorry, whatever comes out of the middle outlet, you'll pass right back into the right inlet, and then you'll just get out what you passed in. And we'll get rid of this later, but it's just helpful for now. So then if we print here, um, from the third outlet here of uh, array map, we're getting the index. So for the eight items, we'll get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In ZL lookup, we have this scrambled list. So we're just going to look up the item in the scrambled list. So let's print that. 60, 67, 67, 72, blah, 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 whatever, right? And you can see that the original if is like 57, 67, so it's different order. Uh, and then from the original array, we will take the pitch. I'm going to store our new pitch in uh, just I object or int. And dict.unpack is going to give us the value associated with the pitch, but we don't want that. We want to replace it. So I'm just going to bang through the new value. And then I'll do dict.pack pitch, which is the opposite of unpack. And what's cool about these dict.pack and dict.unpack is it's going to give me from the left outlet here, uh, the item, the, the value associated with this key pitch, but it will also give me the rest of the dictionary from the right outlet. So if I simply um, make this connection, then this is effectively just modifying the pitch key of the original dictionary, but not transforming anything else. So the velocity, the start time, the note ID, all these other things that are, you know, characteristic of each of these notes is not going to be modified. Uh, so then we can just pass that result back around into the array map object. And I'm pretty anal about this kind of patching hygiene stuff. And then array.map is going to give us from its outlet a re an array of notes with rescrambled pitches. And then all we have to do is pack that into a, um, a dictionary called keys. So we're just kind of redoing what we undid up here. And then send that to the live.midi tool that out. So now it should be that if I shrink this max window and I cross my fingers and I click this bang that I rearranged the notes of this MIDI clip. So this is a really cool way to rescramble your melodies. Let's do just the final steps here. So uh, I'm going to get rid of some of this junk. I'll move this over here. In this case, we didn't use the context. Maybe I'll do one in the future where we use the context. And do we have any rogue prints lying around? We do. So that's the whole patch. And then I'm just going to add this, this button to presentation. I'm going to go into inspector, the patch inspector. I'm going to turn on open in presentation and I'm going to save this as of, uh, randomize notes or randomize pitches. 
and close it. And, oh, why didn't that, <laughs> why didn't our, our, oh, because I didn't do that in presentation mode. There we go. Save. There we go. And that's it. All right. Well, enjoy that. I hope uh, you get to play around with this. Hopefully, Live 12 comes out soon, and anybody who's not gotten into the beta um, can can play with this. I think it is in public beta, so you can get in there, but I think there is a wait list. Um, yeah, let me know how you're enjoying these uh, array objects and uh, Max 8.6 in general, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.